You get a call from your local hospital. They tell you that they're running desperately low on this special type of oxygen valve. There are patients who will need this valve in order to survive and the manufacturer just can't provide the part in time. They ask if there's something you can do since you have a 3D printer. You can hear the desperation in their voice and you realize that you're their only hope. What would you do if you found yourself in that situation? Would you have the confidence in your design skills to show up and attempt to recreate the part? Well, that's what Christian Fercasi did. When he got the call, it's reported that he took his 3D printer to the hospital and within a few hours, he was able to reproduce the desperately needed valve, resulting in lives being saved. I'll leave a link to the full story below if you haven't read it. It's a very inspiring story and shows how valuable this skill is. I want you to imagine that it's you in that position. You're the one who gets the call. You show up to the hospital with your laptop in your 3D printer and here's what they show you. Your mission is to recreate this. There are lives at stake here and they're depending on you to come through. Pause the video and give it a shot. Don't worry about the exact dimensions and for the inside we'll just assume that there's a hole through the bottom that travels this way and this way. All right, pause the video and give it a shot and then I'll show you my approach. Before I begin, I do want to emphasize that this video is for educational purposes only. I simply want to show my strategy in tackling this design and don't recommend 3D printing this part to be a functional model. We'll begin by bringing in the picture of the model. So I'll go to insert down to canvas and I'm going to click on insert from my computer, navigate to where I have my folder. And I've got a couple pictures here of the model. So actually, let me show you in the options I have to go with. I did a little bit, a little bit of a Googling here and I found this picture where it looks to be the original model. And then this is the one printed with the FDM machine. And then this picture here is a replica created uh, with a higher quality 3D printer or that SLS machine. Um, now, I was originally going to trace this one or use this to base my sketch off of, but the angle of the picture is a bit skewed there and it's just going to make it a little more difficult. So let's go ahead and create this one because it's, it's basically very similar, you know, pretty much the same and the principle and strategy is going to be the exact same. So, okay, we'll select that one and I'll choose my ZX plane. The only thing I'm doing here is bringing that opacity down a little bit. Let's go to a front view so we can see it better. I'll zoom in. The uh, one thing I'm going to do here is flip this horizontally. So I see it right here. I'm going to click OK. And now I'm going to create a sketch on my ZX plane and I'll go to my canvas and expand it over here. Right click and let's go to calibrate. And I don't know the exact dimension of this, but based on the hands there, let's say this is about four inches from top to bottom. So I'm just going to type that in four inch. I'm going to spell out inch because I'm working with uh, millimeters as my default unit. So I have to actually tell it when I want to go with inches. Okay, now I'm going to go back to that canvas and I'm going to go to edit, right click and edit. And then I'm going to move this to the middle here. Basically, I want it lined up so that this green line comes or goes right through the middle of it and I can take this little widget to spin it and I can actually even fine tune that angle here. So maybe let's say we'll do one, move it the other way, uh, maybe like negative two. And you can just kind of play around with the number till you get it right. So we'll go negative four, it looks a lot better. Uh, and you can even do decimals there if you really need to get really precise. Okay, I'm gonna center this now a little bit better and that looks to be good for what I need and I'll click okay. All right, so the strategy here is uh, going to be to create a sketch and then use the revolve tool. Um, whenever you're working with anything that has a cylindrical shape, the revolve tool is going to be your best friend. And I'm going to approach this by basically taking it as two different models. Even though it is one model, the top does look like it is connected um, to the bottom part. So we have this sort of main body and then that little cap on there. I'm going to go in and create them as two separate bodies um, just because it's going to be a little bit easier to work with. And then I'll go ahead and combine them. But the strategy is going to be the same. We'll basically uh, use the revolve tool and then I'll show you my approach to come back in and get this little hand here. Okay, so we'll begin by grabbing the line tool. So I'll hit L on my keyboard and I'm going to zoom the bottom here and just kind of trace this out. And again, I'm not worried so much about dimensions. I'm just going to kind of come in 
and then at this point I can grab an arc or a spline tool to if I wanted it to be more curved but I'm just gonna kinda go straight up here and then I'm gonna come out to do this sort of little lip here and then come across and then hit that check mark and zoom out now I want to connect that top line to the bottom here so we'll grab that line tool again and then connect them I want to make sure that this line is completely vertical I want it to be lined up with that origin there so let's go ahead and grab that and grab our constraint up here that horizontal slash vertical constraint we see it right there so and then I'll go in and make sure all these other lines the ones that I want to be um, vertical or horizontal um, are set to that so everything else looks fine and I'm gonna click on finish sketch and now I'm gonna take this and revolve it to create that uh, circular shape so let's untoggle this canvas here and I'm gonna go down or up to create down to revolve um, this profile actually automatically got selected there and my axis is gonna be this vertical line here and then that creates that shape for me so I'll click OK let's bring in that canvas just to see how that looks um, that's looking good so all right now uh, let's go work on this little cap here so I'll do the same thing I'll actually I'm not gonna create a new sketch let's just go back and work under that same sketch I'll go on that timeline right click and go edit where that sketch um, pro, um, feature is and I'm gonna come in grab my line tool by hitting L on my keyboard and I'm just gonna start about here going out up that little check mark can kind of be a pain if you're zoomed out and if you click on it it'll kick you out of the line tool so you always want to kind of zoom in so it kind of gets it out the way so I'm just gonna quickly sort of trace this and I'm gonna come up with this part here we'll actually go up at a little angle here and then come in now I can hit that check mark to escape and I'm gonna grab my line tool and connect the bottom or that edge there make sure I snap to it straight up to my point I want to make this line vertical so I'll select it and grab that constraint this line I want it to remain angled but this one I want vertical and that one vertical uh, okay I'm actually gonna grab this line and just drag that angle a little bit more like that all right now I'm gonna go to finish sketch oh actually there's one thing I forgot to do so let me go back into that sketch double click on that timeline I'm gonna grab my line tool I want to take this profile um, or this line bring it all the way across and then I'm gonna just draw this um, shape here and basically to create this profile here in um, this shape here because I'm gonna take these and this one and this one and then revolve these around to give me that cap so let me just bring this up a little bit okay now I'm gonna go to finish sketch go to create down to revolve I need to see my sketch so let's bring that into view so like this shape this shape and my axis is gonna be that vertical line and I'm not gonna do a join I'm gonna do a new body and then click OK and now if I untoggle that sketch untoggle the canvas if I expand bodies here I should have two bodies I've got that main body here and then I've got that cap and there it is okay let's continue working on this cap if I bring in that image I can see that it's got like a little window in there um, that we need to, to be able actually to let the air out um, from what I've read with this device it looks like the way it works um, air will come through the bottom here or the oxygen will come through the bottom and then it mixes in um, with air and depending I think on the opening of this uh, determines the the right percentage of air now don't quote me on this this is just me doing a quick search uh, but basically um, the different um, holes here uh, and the diameter of it determines that percentage of air that's getting mixed in to actually go out to the patient uh, but anyway the point is it's gonna need to be uh, a hollow in there with a window to let the air be able to flow so okay we need to let's look at the inside of this actually so I can show you how it looks on the inside we'll go to inspect and do a section analysis let's turn on the origin here I'll select this uh, ZX plane here and click OK and now we can see how that inside of that looks so this is the actual profile that we took to revolve to get us this shape so we can see it's actually hollow in the middle okay let's untoggle that analysis and we're gonna create a sketch we'll do um, this new sketch on the same ZX plane so I'll go to front view and select it and I'm gonna hit P on my keyboard to project the shape of this body here so 
will actually um, actually you know what I'm just yeah let's select bodies click this whole thing click OK it projects it I'm going to now uh, untoggle a body so I just see that outline L for line I'm gonna draw a line from this point to this point here uh, select that line make it a construction line uh, the reason for that line is just to give me a line so I can actually center this rectangle I'm gonna make next so I'll grab my center rectangle I'm gonna find that little triangle it's gonna tell me that's the center of that line and that's gonna be my window there I'm gonna make the let's say 8 by 12 and then hit enter stop sketch select that profile of that rectangle let's bring bodies back into view e for extrude and I'm gonna start dragging this out now for direction I'm gonna change it one side to symmetric and in distance I'm gonna to go to all and that's gonna punch it right through operation is going to be cut just make sure you don't have the other body toggled uh, the visibility on otherwise it will cut through that as well so we'll click OK and now there's our piece uh, looks like the only other thing we need is a hole here so the air can go through so let's create a sketch on that top surface there and I don't know the diameter but I'm just gonna go with like uh, let's see, a two millimeter diameter it looks good finish sketch and E for extrude let's select that profile bring it straight down um, distance we'll just go all um, operation is cut and we'll click OK and now I have my hole there it goes through okay that looks to be pretty good for that top part or little cap um, you know maybe just come over here and give this a fillet like a one millimeter fillet there click OK and maybe something here as well let's go with one okay so now we can work on the other body so this is the main body here Let's bring in that canvas. So we need that little arm over here, that raised arm. Let's create a sketch on that ZX plane there. And then I'm gonna just grab my line tool again and I'm just gonna come inside the body here and go straight out to about that same distance. Um, you know, you can, if you were doing this for real, you would just, uh, you would wanna set that angle there, but I'm just eyeballing it for now and here's a neat approach here that I like using I'm gonna um, grab my pipe tool I'm gonna go to create down to pipe and then select that line and it's gonna create a pipe and you can give it whatever diameter you want so six uh, not 67 um, seven maybe it's a little too big let's go down to five not 75 um, yeah five looks pretty good so I'm gonna go with a join here click OK and let's untackle that canvas now I can do a fillet here do like a one millimeter fillet to, so it's got a stronger attachment to the rest of that body and now we can go ahead and do a um, shell on the bottom here because we need that opening I can't really tell based on the picture uh, like what the size of the opening is on the bottom there but I'm just gonna assume it's pretty much uh, like a shell here on the bottom so I'm gonna go to modify down to shell select that bottom face uh, we'll do like a two millimeter shell here click OK it's a inside uh, or the direction is inside and there goes our shell now notice here if I zoom in actually because I, I have that little arm there and it's part of this model because I joined it it actually goes ahead and shells that out as well it does a two millimeter shell all around it now I don't want that there because I'm actually gonna go put a hole there and I want more control of the size of that hole the neat thing with Fusion 360 is it's really easy to delete holes like this you just select the surface and hit delete and it just deletes it um, and now I can actually go in and create a sketch on this surface here and let's project that circle so we can actually get a center point there I'll hit P for project um, I'll do sketch entities this time and then select that perimeter there click OK and now I can do C for circle and I can snap right to that center point and I don't know let's go with a two millimeter on this one we'll click OK finish sketch select that profile let's go to a front view here I'll zoom out uh, E4 extrude and I'm just gonna take that and bring it straight to the middle there click OK and now if I go back in I have a hole that's you know the exact uh, diameter that I set it for uh, okay that looks to be you know fine on the inside and we've got our hole going on the bottom here we'd need a hole on the top here as well so let's create a sketch here and see 
or circle, so two millimeters. We'll mm, keep it the same. Or maybe you'll want to go a little bit bigger on this one. Like I said, I don't know. We'll hit um, three, a little three millimeter hole there. Um, e4 extrude, go all the way down. Distance, we'll go all. Click OK. Now I've got that hole going through the bottom, and I also got that hole going here. And yeah, that looks good. The only maybe we'll do like a little fillet here. Click OK. Maybe a fillet on the bottom as well. And all right, let's bring that cap into view. Now let's bring our image here. So, oops. Okay, so it looks like we have, we see it on here and on this one as well that these these little um, these little ribs here uh, to help the tubing um, to be able to stick in and not be able, not pull out. Um, so let's uh, let's put those in, and I'll show you another neat approach here that you can take to do that. So um, what I'm going to do is create a sketch on that. Uh, we'll do that ZX plane again, and I'm just going to draw a couple lines here. We'll go one and two. Um, it doesn't matter actually how you know where they are, how wide they are, but we'll kind of we'll put them right here and. L4 line again, we'll draw another one here and another one here. Um, you can see I got that parallel constraint. I do want them to be um, parallel. Um, actually, I want it to be parallel to this edge here. So let me grab my parallel constraint and select this. Uh, I need to project this line here. Okay, now I can grab my parallel constraint, select this line and this line. And they are parallel. Now I'll draw another line here. And then I'll make this line also parallel to this line. Okay, now you know you can go back and set those spacing. Let's just take a look at that picture one more time. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so now that I have that line, I'm gonna go to finish sketch and then I'm gonna go to modify and then down to split face. This will be my face, and my splitting tool will be this line. Click OK. Right click, we'll go up to repeat split face. I need that sketch back into view. Uh, this is my face, and this is my splitting tool. OK. And we'll do the same thing here repeat um, split face. Select that, and one more time. OK. So now let's get rid of that sketch. And you can see that I have these uh, lines here that go all around like because it split that face and left a little ring there. Um, it's basically, it, it's, you know, it doesn't have any depth to it or anything. It's just, it's just a split. Um, so now what I can do is I can go to create and down to my pipe tool again. And I'll select it and I will give it a millimeter or a diameter of, let's say, one millimeter. Uh, our section size here in this case it's called um, that looks a little too thick so let's go to 0 0.5 yeah that looks better repeat it here 0 0.5 operation is join and then repeat it with these other parts down here as well okay now we've got a little rings there uh, let me see anything else I'm missing here our cap looks pretty good we got the hole going through it and the hole going through that part and the bottom which I'm, I'm guessing must be hollow like that um, but, all right I think I think that looks pretty good if you see anything I missed leave it in the comments below from basically what I have to go with with the with the models here uh, only thing I would do um, in addition actually would I'll put a chamfer over here usually you know it's, it's a good principle if you want to like insert tubing there you can make it a little bit easier for tubing to go in I'll put a 0.5 millimeter chamfer there um, you know the don't think we need it on the top but let's do it anyway let's see if I can fit a 0.5 Okay, looks good. All right, let's bring in that canvas into view. I think we're looking pretty good. You know, if I wanted this to go wider again, I could, you know, this sort of comb, I could go back to that sketch and actually 
kind of playing with fire here because I don't have any constraints, but let's make that a little bit wider. Stop sketch. Yeah, worked out. Okay. All right, there goes our model. So uh, if you have any questions on, on my approach here, just leave it in the comments below. Uh, I know I went pretty quick, but these are just kind of meant to be, let me show you my approach type of videos and not, um, you know, let's go slow step by step. All right, if you have any questions on my approach, leave it in the comments below. And if you're new to Fusion 360 or you're a struggling beginner, um, check out my Fusion 360 quick start guide. I'll leave it in the description below. All right, stay safe out there.